you might wonder sometimes, maybe you're secure and you're dating someone who you're like, why doesn't he ever call? Or why does she like really seem to need me all the time? Right. You know, like it's maybe because their attachment style is not so great um, or not so secure. And so, yeah, dating and then it can go into marriage. It can go into relationships at work, you know, and really ne needing that validation from your boss that like, hey, you're doing, you're doing well. I don't know if I am and just feeling like I really need that. Welcome to the Hope in Real Life podcast with Jason Gore. Our team is passionate and committed to bringing you more hope in the everyday, real areas of your life. If this conversation and content is valuable for you, please do us a favor. Like, subscribe, and even share. You never know how valuable it could be to share a little bit of hope with someone else. Let's get the conversation started. Well, hello, Hope in Real Life family. So excited to be here for this episode that I know is going to be beneficial for so many if they will just stay tuned in. I'm here with, uh, sincerely, a dear friend and Laura McEwen. Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this week we are talking about, uh, the, the working title here says, Friends, the real reason you struggle <laughs> to make new ones. Uh, but the idea is, it, man, as an adult, Making real friendships and holding real relationships is a difficult thing yeah. for a lot of different reasons. And so we wanted to take some time to talk about it. And uh, Lord, you are um, well equipped to, to lead us in that conversation. But before we do that, I'd love just for our guests, for our listeners, why don't you just say hello and let them know a little bit about yourself? Hello, uh, I am Laura McEwen, and uh, what do you want to know about me? I am married. I have two kids. I'm a mental health counselor. I... I've known Jason, a little known fact, for 22 years. 22 years. Yeah, the longest of anyone else that's been on uh, a podcast episode for sure. So you probably have a lot of stories. So we'll be careful there. But I, I was thinking about that. I mean, we've we've traveled around the world I've been yeah. doing ministry together. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in Trinidad, like yeah. into, right out of the gate. Yeah. Uh, we've seen a lot of things in, uh, to say the least, yeah. over the last 20 years in the world of ministry. For sure. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's do this. Uh, tell them just a little bit about your your career, because now you're, as a mental health counselor, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But let's back that up. You know, even fifteen years. Like, what what has your professional career looked like, and what's led you to where you are now? Sure. Um, well, I'll hope actually has been most of my career. So I uh, went to NC State. We both did, right? And then I graduated. I graduated, and um, I was a psychology undergrad and um, got didn't want to go to grad school, didn't want to do the whole counseling um, thing at that point, um, but loved working at Hope, volunteering at Hope. And so I got into children's ministry. Then I did like six years there, a year in Global Hope, and then I went to care ministry. And so Hope has a care ministry that allows just, you just to really enter in when people are hurting and just figuring out what support was. And a lot of times that was leading people to counseling and just kind of the partnerships that we have. Um, so I always loved that, but never really felt equipped to do the counseling part. So I actually went back and got my master's. And um, then after 17 years of being at Hope, felt like the Lord was transitioning me into full-time counseling. And I've done that for yeah. a while well now. Yeah, a few things I want to say. Uh, one, uh, if it, when I know when you look at this title, Difficult to Make Friends, if you're a guy who's listening to this podcast, mm -hmm. I know you because... I am one. All right. You could be tempted to say, okay, that's probably enough. And I wish I'd have said this in the first 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, even in this conversation with Laura, kind of leading up to this in pre-production, like this is a topic that we desperately need to engage. And, and I would venture to say, like, until you really understand your relationships or lack thereof, you're going to have a difficult time experiencing everything that you could in life. And so out of all the episodes, stay tuned into this. Your friends, your family, your coworkers will appreciate it um, afterwards. And then secondly, um, I just want to be able to say it on the air for everyone to hear. Um, I've known a lot of people. You were one of the strongest, and I'm not going to say like one of the strongest women. You were one of the strongest individuals that I've ever had the privilege to work and serve alongside mm -hmm. of. And so I'm grateful for you to be on here with us. Thank all you, right. Jason. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, let's jump in uh, and let's hear why, why is making friends so difficult? Once we get out of college. Yeah, right. As if as if I have all the answers. That would be nice if I did, but I don't. Um, I think it's a lot of layers, right? We're definitely living in a difficult time. Um, I guess we, we consider to be that individualistic culture, right? We right. don't have, just by nature, we're just pretty isolated. But then the pandemic really did us no favors in that. And yeah. so 
Um, I think it's hard, social media, we feel like we're connected, but we're not really connected. And so I would say that there's a lot of factors that probably make us have challenges in, in developing relationships. Um, and I kind of see it as like, if we picked up a d bunch of different um, glasses and you can say, okay, like if I look through these glasses and that makes sense why it's hard. And then if I look through these glasses, this might be why it's hard. Um, I think from a mental health side that there's some different glasses we could put on that aren't necessarily talked about a lot. And so that's kind of my passion of just talking about different things that might add to the difficulty in, in really having relationships. Yeah, right on. Well, I mean, I think uh, since you are here, we should definitely talk about the things that you're the most passionate about talking about. So um, uh, uh, without further ado, I mean, mm -hmm. let's jump in. What, yeah. what, what are some things that you think, man, we can have our eyes open to that might not be on the radar as it relates to relationships and friendships? Right. So there's something called attachment styles that everybody has. Um, and you fall into one of four categories. Um, so you either have a secure attachment style where you feel like you kind of know how to give and receive love. Um, you feel pretty stable in your relationships. Doesn't mean relationships are perfect, just means that you feel fairly secure in them. And then there's the other part that falls in the insecure. And that can kind of be divided into three categories. One is anxious. And so those people who have an anxious attachment style might feel um, a little bit more nervous in relationships. Are they going to leave me? Do they really love me? Um, I really need them in my life in order to feel okay in my life. Um, and then there's avoidant. Those people are more on the, en the end of the spectrum where I really don't need people. I'm pretty good on my own. I've, I don't need to be vulnerable with you. I can meet my own needs. Um, and then there's disorganized, which is actually a fairly, uh, less common one, which is a little bit of a mix of both, where it's like, I feel like I need you, but then I can't trust you. So I kind of pull back. Um, so statistics will tell you that probably, I mean, you, you can find statistics to tell you whatever you want to see sometimes, but it seems like in general, they'll say about 50% of the population will fall in the insecure. So it's a pretty common thing. Um, and it's hard to have relationships if you don't feel secure in relationships. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'm hearing that when you first said secure, and then you got to mention that, I'm thinking, probably a good number of people that automatically just thought, oh yeah, I'm secure. I don't really need the other ones. I don't. Right. And, but the, the reality is, and you were saying this in the pre-production, um, if you're prone to one of the other attachment styles, that's, that's your reality. So you don't know any different. You just assume it's normal. Right. You know? and, and I also don't love the, the title of insecure because who wants to be like signing up for that? Um, right. And so I really kind of use the word like safe. Like I don't necessarily feel safe in relationships. Hmm. Um, I don't, I don't feel like I can rely on them, right? They're not secure in the fa fact that I can rely on them. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's hard for people to kind of look at that. But like I also said in the pre-production is that you can't heal what you don't name. And so if you're re really regularly seeing that maybe there are difficulties in relationships or how I experience relationships, it might be worth considering like, is this a thing for me? Yeah. Hey, if you currently are not connected to a church or, or maybe you're not sure about the whole faith thing or you, you gave up on church a long time ago, I want you to understand, like, church hurt is a real thing, and so that's understandable, but you don't need to miss out on the encouragement and on the hope that, that, that knowing Jesus and being part of a community of believers has to offer. So I want to tell you about something here, gethope.tv. It's an online church experience where you'll find engaging music, a message that's relevant to the everyday moments of your life, uh, and, and it's that, that service is put on by Hope Community Church, and I hope our greatest desire is that people would come to know who God really is, would be able to walk in His ways, and, and find the ways to experience hope in the everyday moments of our lives. Listen, you don't have to have everything all figured out to, to, to tune in with us. Uh, you can even, if you're, man, you're at home, so feel free, stay in your pajamas, listen at the gym when you're getting in your workout. But gethope.tv online, Sunday mornings, 9.30 a.m., 11.15 a.m. There's even an option to join Join us on Saturdays at 4.15 p.m. or 6 p.m. as well. Wherever you are, you're welcome. We'd love to have you tune in with us at gethope.tv. Um, so I'm sure that we have some listeners right now that kind of had the same sensation that I had when I first kind of read your, your pre-show notes mm -hmm. and some of the things we we're going to talk about. I was like, how, how does she know my life story <laughs> and what it is that I'm struggling with? Yeah. And so, you know, I'm sure, so when you went through those, I'm sure you kind of raised some, some at least some eyebrows yeah. for some folks, but... What are some, uh, is, are there any tools or, or any, um, I don't know, any exercises that an individual could do or some uh, self-realization to actually determine, like, are there one of these styles that we yeah. might be more prone to? Yeah. I mean, it's helpful to 
kind of look at your life and like what's what's been taught to you in life? Because attachment styles are basically like your unwritten rules for relationships. And you kind of learn those as you go through relationships. So most people don't like to look back at, you know, childhood and like say, oh, it was all because of, you know, the way that I grew up. Um, and especially if you're a parent like we are now, it's like you really hope that you're not right. screwing up your kids. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, but contrary to many beliefs, counselors actually don't want to make parents the bad guys. Like right. they just want to be informed on like, yeah. hey, what was this like for you? And so um, attachment really is primarily founded in the way that you have relationships with your primary caregiver. So if you had a mom or dad or grandparent or whatever, whoever was taking care of you, you kind of learn not like just what were my physical needs met. You know, sometimes they were and they're like, okay, well, then I'm secure. Well, let's look at right. that. You know, right. like emotionally, what did, what was taught to you? Did did your parents say like, oh, mm, you're having a lot of emotions here. You just go over there and you figure that out and then you come back. Um, or they just felt like you just felt like you were too much in emotions. Yeah. And so then you kind of have to figure out like, hey, I need to figure out that on my own. Or sometimes there's some stuff that's just going on with parents and they just don't have the bandwidth. And it's not really because they don't want to. It's just they don't either have the skill set because they weren't ever taught or well, they got two jobs. They're both yeah. working. They're trying to figure it out. Maybe right. there's multiple kids. Another sick kid. Like yeah. I've had, I've had clients who, you know, a parent just had a really, really terminally ill other child, and their focus was all on that. Right. So yeah, crisis will throw us all for a loop. Right. And so it's like, how? Do, what do you learn about that? What do I? How do I need to emotionally process? Who can I rely on? And what am I learning about? That's that's kind of how you can start to look at things, like just being aware of. What did I learn when I was growing up? And then throughout life, it's not just that. You can have some significant relationships that can impact you. Yeah. One thing I've learned, um, not about myself, of course, <laughs> through other counseling, people. but through other people, <laughs> uh, is that um, your tendencies or your proneness, while it is your reality, mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best mm -hmm. or the only way. Mm -hmm. And like you said learning where it came from uh -huh. and how it started and how you got there. Like that, that's not to label you, but it's to help you. Then now you can start kind of take some steps back and realize, okay, now maybe I can build a new path forward. That's not built on the things that I just assumed must be true. Right. And it's also encouraging to know that like, just if, as you look into attachment styles, it's not the death sentence. It's not like, oh, this is your permanent fate and you're never going to be able to break through from that. It actually is really encouraging that like, they call them earned secure attachments. And so like you can actually work towards feeling really great in a relationship. And so sometimes um, if you're in a relationship with a really secure person, they make you feel really safe. And so you don't have some of those like triggers of like, oh, I need to pull back or I can't, I can't rely on them um, or they're going to leave me. That stuff isn't really known as much because they just like emulate, like I have this or emit this like security that they really, right. really love. So those are really great relationships, but sometimes you just have to work on them. So we're talking about making friends, uh -huh. right, and having community. But let's ask, can, can, can attachment styles, can they affect other relationships in our life that we do have, like our marriages, uh -huh. for example? Uh, does it play out in the dating life, in, in the professional world, corporate world? Maybe talk about some of that impact. Yeah. Yeah, for dating, I mean, I think it's really common. You know, yeah. dating's hard. Yes. I'm right. glad I'm not. Right. <laughs> I'm done with that phase <laughs> in my life. But. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, you might wonder sometimes maybe you're secure and you're dating someone who you're like why doesn't he ever call or why does she like really seem to need me all the time right. you know like it's maybe because their attachment style is not so great um or not so secure and so yeah dating and then it can go into marriage it can go into relationships at work you know and really ne needing that validation from your boss that like hey you're doing you're doing well I don't know if I am and just feeling like I really need that um or just being kind of loner at work and just independent Nobody really knows you. You show up, you do the job, and that's all, you know. Yeah. So you can see in that. And then also, I think even in the spiritual sense, like a relationship with God, I think you can definitely see some impact. We're going to take a brief break from our show to let you know about a new resource that we have just for you. If you're looking for a resource on personal development and spiritual enrichment, then we have something for you. It's called the Hope in Real Life mobile app. Uh, this app is made specifically for our listeners to anyone who's looking for a bit more hope in everyday life. The Hope in Real Life app offers multiple features like daily devotions, parenting tips, financial resources, marriage insights, and a community where you can share prayer requests and know that others are praying for you. You can download it now in the Google Play or Apple App Store, wherever it is that you would go to download applications. 
This is a resource that we've created for you. Can't wait for you to jump on it. Tomorrow can be better than today, and hope is possible, even in real life. Let's get back to the show. Think about that for a moment, because that was something, and I know that all of our listeners aren't mm-hmm. um, necessarily at church every weekend or all sharing the same faith beliefs, but that was something that came out of you when we were talking in pre-production. So talk about that a little bit. Like, How do these attachment styles impact our ability to really pursue a relationship with God or feel um, comfortable yeah. with inside a relationship with God. Talk about that for a minute. Yeah, well, I think with Christianity, Christianity specifically, like Jesus is a personal God, right? So it's not just like, okay, there's this far off distant God. It's like, hey, he actually wants to be part of my life yeah. and it's this intimate relationship. And so that can be really intimidating for some people. It's like, you know, I don't really need that. I don't want that. Like, you know, People who have more avoidant style, if they're in a relationship with God, they sometimes have troubles expressing needs to God or relying on God or trusting that he's going to show up for how he says he's going to. Um, And then those with anxious, sometimes they just don't really trust that God does love them. Did I do something that's like taken me too far? Can I be forgiven of this? It's it's too much. Um, So it definitely has a play in how you see Jesus at least. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'll just tack on to that, you know, and, and we'll move on. But I would say to our listeners, if you're out there and you're like, I, yeah, that's me. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I think I have done too much. I think I have gone too far. Um, or, you know, I, I can, you know, I can give praise to a God who's great, but mm-hmm. I, I don't really believe he wants to meet me in my mess. And, and by the way, if that's you, I get it. Um, but I want you to know that that's, that's not the God who created us. And there is a God that loves you and that wants to step with you into where you are in your life. And you're not going to fully know and experience that until you're willing to go down that journey. And so if we can help you in any way, you know, in any way that is contact us on whatever social media platform, you know, obviously we would love to follow up with you and help you out. So, um, let's see, where do we want to go with this, man? How about, how about, um, resources just engaging this? If somebody wants to say, Hey, let me take this a little bit further. You know what? Hold the phone on that one. Let's, let's not go to resources yet. Sure. To talk about, because one that we kind of hit, and we'll pretend like I'm not pulling the curtain back on myself here, <laughs> all right? And so hypothetically, let's say there was somebody that couldn't really put the pen to paper on which one of these were, but say mm-hmm. they had um, an attachment style, or maybe it's not an attachment style, but it's like, you know what? Relationships are hard for me because I just don't want to be let down. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen, maybe somebody's seen some things from some people growing up and then maybe say hypothetically, then some other things happened in college. And then let's say hypothetically, they ended up getting, and they were professionals and they were adults. And then there's people that they looked up to and then they let them down. And then, so maybe let's just say hypothetically, you know what, it's just a lot easier to not depend on anybody or to not trust on anybody. And sometimes it's easier to labor alone in the cold and in the dark (laughs) than it is to really make yourself vulnerable to trusting even one more time. Any thoughts on that? Hypothetically, of course, you know, I'm not. (laughs) Yes. Um, There was a a great quote. I wish I had my phone, but uh, it was just talking about how relationships are not meant to be easy. They're meant to be fulfilling. Hmm. So you could totally go, not you, the, the hypothetical right, yeah, yeah. Person, right? And I'll yeah. let them know. I'll let them know. <laughs> just pass it on. Yeah. Um, you could totally just allow that to be the case. I'm just not going to rely on people. People stink sometimes and they let me down. And so you could go to that end of the spectrum, but that wouldn't really be super fulfilling. Um, and so that quote was just saying like, they're not meant to be easy. Uh, they're meant to be fulfilling. Um, but sometimes you don't know how to have that. And it's going to take work and your kitchen's going to get dirty. Like, yeah. you know, like it's going to be challenging. But I think at the end of the day, when you don't have that, you feel lonely. Yeah. It's like God created us for relationship. Yeah. And there's something innate that we just know, like it's, this isn't right. I could choose this. This could be, I could put up all my walls and all my guards and I could live nice and safe on this side, but I'd feel alone and I would miss out on the joys that I think actually are meant to be in healthy relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I'll just, I'll piggyback on that and I'll say, you know, this podcast is about bringing people hope in real life. We know that there's um, someone in multiple, many, many hundreds and thousands of men and women and students that are walking around the world right now that are lacking in hope. And I do know, we know as a team, you know, a large part of that is because they are lacking a, a real 
healthy community Mm -hmm. around them. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm just like all joking aside, I am a guy that, man, it's, it's, it's hard for me. Mm -hmm. And there's reasons why it's hard. And then some is just probably sheer laziness. And sometimes it's easier to stand by yourself, Mm -hmm. but man, we're not as hope filled of a people. We're not hitting on all cylinders if we don't have the relationships in our lives that we need. And so we've got to be willing to do this work. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's let's jump to resources then. Uh-huh. Um, books, podcasts. What do you think? Somebody says, "Okay, fine. Yes. I'll try to take a step uh-huh. in opening up and in furthering my relational connection with others in my life." Well, what do you got? Resources. I know I'm biased because I am a counselor, but I do feel like this is work that's hard to do independently. Yeah. It's hard to do where I just read a book and then I or I just look at this post on Instagram because you need someone to reflect back to you, ask you the questions, right. dig out things. So. My main resource would be like, hey, if, if you think that this is hard and I'm not sure why it's hard, um, avoidance tend to not want to go to counseling. Makes a lot of sense, right? It's like, because then I'm going to have to yeah. be vulnerable and then I'm going to have to say that I have a need and that something's wrong. Um, and so they don't like that. But you can have an earned, secure relationship with your counselor and yeah. it would be great. Um, so I would think that this is better done in a relationship environment. Um, but there are resources. There's a great book. It's called Attached. It's like a very um, user-friendly book to read. Uh, and it kind of gives you a lot of examples so you can kind of get to know these high attachment styles better. And then if you are on uh, the social media, Instagram. The uh, social media. The one TikToks. One right. <laughs> um I think she's actually on um, Facebook too, but it's called The Secure Relationship. Okay. And um, a coworker introduced me to that and everything that I've seen seems to be pretty spot on. Um, so it can kind of give you a lot more examples uh, so you can learn a little bit about it. Okay. And we'll make sure that all of those are listed in the show notes as well. Sure. And um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's do this. What? So you got me knowing that, okay, we've listened to the audience and we just know intellectually like we need to have a community around us. We need to be able to take those steps to develop the relationships and making friends are hard. Um, I've taken my best swing at this thing. What, what questions have I not asked mm-hmm. that you're like, Jason, this is the question you should be asking. This is the topic we should be talking about. Oh that's a, that's a tough one. Um, within relationships. Um, I think the goal of you being the healthiest person that you can be for yourself impacts everything in your life, right? Mm-hmm. And it impacts how you navigate the world. And so, um, we don't live in this kind of world that like slows down and considers how am I feeling? What am I thinking? Like <laughs> we are not touchy feely. We don't like that kind of stuff, but it, there's so much value in it. And I, it's really cool to see, to get to watch what, from what I did at Hope, where I really did a lot more of the triage intake and then, Hey, you go and you go to counseling or you go to this resource. And I didn't necessarily always get to see the the process, but being in the counseling room, I can see the way that when people invest in time just to slow down and to consider how they can become the healthier, healthiest version of themselves, it actually does matter. They Joy is reignited and um, things that were broken get healed. And that's just something I'm always going to want to encourage people to do, even though it's not a really popular message. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Well, let's do this. I, I'd love to give uh, our, our audience just a little, just, you know, we started out talking about your life, but maybe a little bit more of a snapshot uh-huh. as to who you are. And so uh, this season, I'm asking all of our guests the same question. Um, what are you most hope filled about in your life right now? Um, I mean, honestly, Jesus is the, the hope that gives me the most um, substantial hope that I can count on because I don't know. You know, I know we've been friends outside of this. There's some tough things that go on in life. And, you know, I've had some family members that are struggling health wise and it's hard to put your hope in anything else. Doctors, you know, medication, things like that. And so I feel very hope filled that if I had a tagline, Jesus doesn't waste pain. And so I know that's never for not. And so I feel very hope filled that he is the same God that he's always been and he's going to be faithful. So... There's your churchy answer, but, yeah, <laughs> but that's genuine. Hey, we ask for a reason. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I can I can sincerely say and um, and th- through a lot of challenging times mm-hmm. that, that I know that you've walked through, I can say for me personally that I've walked through, um, mm-hmm. man, I, I just haven't found anywhere else I can go yeah. that I can find the same 
steadiness and faithfulness and honestly security yeah. that um, in my brokenness, I just don't know that I believe I'm going to get yeah. in other relationships. So, well, um, we're going to have stuff in the show notes. We'll have everything there for, for folks to, to look into. Anything else that you would encourage our folks towards as it relates to relationships? I think we've hit everything. Just put yourself out there a little bit. You know, you can't expect relationships just to happen. Like, just test the waters to see, like, is this person who's regularly in my life someone who maybe I should take a step towards getting to know a little bit more? Um, because it's not going to change. If you don't make any action, people aren't knocking down doors to be f your friend. And yeah. so it does take some personal responsibility. So um, figure out what's already going on in your life and how you can take maybe just one small step. I know. Well, Laura, thank you so much for your time mm -hmm. and thank you for joining in with us to, to do all that we can do to bring hope into the everyday real moments of our listeners' lives. And uh, I know that we will have you back on the show very soon, but um, can't thank you enough. So mm -hmm. appreciate the work and uh, thankful that you're chasing after what it is that God has in front of you. Thanks. To you all, thanks for tuning in this week and we will see you on our next episode of Hope in Real Life. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Hope in Real Life podcast. If this content was valuable for you, don't forget, like, subscribe, share. You never know how important it could be to bring a little hope into someone else's life. Uh, there's even a place here for you to comment. We would love to hear from you and hear your feedback. Until next time, let's keep sharing hope.